Post Projects and Project 818 SRX. Today we're finishing up some panel mounting. I'd already made some hinges for the engine cover, I don't know, six months ago, a year ago, and I had an idea for the front. The way Factory 5 supplies it, you use hood, hood pins uh, right here and back here, and I just didn't like the look of it. I'm going to use hood pins in the front just because there's no real great alternative, but I had a good idea for here. So I don't want anything here and there. Back here is getting replaced by the hinges, so the back is fixed. The front, I'm kind of using hood pins, but you're not going to see them. Uh, so let me show you how I do that. So here you can see the hood pin. And if you look on the back side of this, I've actually put, I've glued some foam in there and got a rather crude hole and I'm using the hood pin as an alignment pin so when it closes down it goes into place and then to hold it in place I'm just using the old drifter rubber band bumper clips so it'll be simply reach in here unclick that, un unhook that on both sides and then Lift it up, and then we have the money shot with the engine. I've also wrapped the hot side of my intercooler piping. I know most guys just go hot boy and put the uh, gold reflective tape on there, but that's pointless. This is hot and we don't want it to transfer heat to the intake manifold. So I wrapped it just as far as I needed to to get past my cold side, which is my intake manifold here, um, to keep that hot and moving fast and not transfer that heat over here. And then hopefully with the hood vents on each side, there won't be any heat transfer. So I went ahead and wrapped the whole area with uh, just regular clear shipping tape and then rub the whole thing down with a mold release and made this little guy. So I laid some fiberglass cloth. So this fits perfectly on there. So the idea right now is I'm gonna cover this with some Gorilla Epoxy glue and that is going to glue in here exactly where it needs to be. And then if there's any gap in here or whatever, I'll just fill it with more foam and then just cover this with more glass so it looks finished because I can't have it just pink styrofoam when I open up the, the hood here. So here they are glued in and set. You can see there's quite a bit of gap here. The plan is to fill that gap to more foam and then kind of blend that down with fiberglass and just make this one solid corner. Uh, however, I decided to not bother with that right now. I, I don't really want to take the engine cover off. I want to get it on the road and there's probably only a month or two left that, that, that I could drive this. So that's something that I can do uh, over the winter for sure. So I'm just going to leave it as is for now. It's a, it's a little hack, but it's, you know, I'm just trying to make the outside of it look not so hack and I'll worry about these little details after. I've spent the past three days non-stop um, filling and sanding and filling and sanding and filling and sanding. And there's not a lot of filler on there. It's just to get the lines just right, it's a little tricky. Um, I started off using like one of these Dura blocks, but it doesn't really have any flex to it. And um, there's not really any flat spots on this car. It's useful in a few spots, like on the hood and whatnot, but it, it proved to be more of a hindrance and I would sand it and get flat spots from this and then I had to fill those flat spots and then I just had to give up on this. So what I ended up you So what I ended up making was I just took a piece of half inch styrofoam which has you know just the right amount of flex. It's fairly rigid but you can force it to the curve of the body and the it's it's worked great, uh, and I've used the same, you know, sticky um, 
don't know what this is, 16 inch by like two and a half inch sandpaper bits. Um, and I just stuck it on there and that has worked fantastic. So I did all the body work using 120 grit and now it's a 220. So the plan is to next spray everything down with this white high build primer. That'll help fill uh, the sand scratches and then I'll just w rub it all down by hand. I got some 280 grit and that's just how I'm going to leave the body uh, until I wrap it. It's not perfect. Uh, it's, it's not quite paint ready, but I think it's pretty damn close and I'm going to call it wrap ready. Um, but I don't want to wrap it until the cold weather hits. I want to drive it. So that's why I'm going to do it in the white primer. It's not going to be the same as the rest of the body. This is kind of a, a brighter white to this, this, you know, um, more yellowish or dull white, but, uh, it'll work. As for what I used for filling, uh, I used a little bit of this for the big stuff initially. This is just glass bubbles. I mixed it with some uh, East System uh, epoxy, the same as the West System stuff, just a little cheaper. Um, that was just for the big things when I was working out the, uh, the gaps and, and, and shaping up this fender. Um, that stuff takes like at least 24 hours to, to get sandable. So it certainly wasn't what I used for this part. This part was, you know, fill this side, go over there, sand, fill that side, come back, sand. And I was just jumping around the body between these two sides and the front of the front bumper is pretty much where all my time was spent. And I was using... Uh, this stuff here, um, feather right, that was the, the body filler I was using, and then, and then this stuff is the last stuff to go on. It's great for filling in, you know, your little pinholes, your sand scratches, this is just a, a glazing putty. Um, you should never put this on very thick, and it's, it's not. Um, in a lot of cases, it seems like most of it's sanded off, but if you look close, you'll see it's still in some of the the deep scratches and pinholes. The only thing left before I prime everything on the car is to just finish up the lip on these wheel wells. Um, it's kind of uneven and jagged in some spots. It's even a, a sharp edge that I don't want the tire to grab onto and it just doesn't appear nice. It's just the rough cut uh, as it came from Factory 5 uh, how they trimmed it out of the mold. So the plan is to just kind of even it up with this guy and then I'll just rub over by hand um, with some like 200 grit uh, just to smooth things out. So I've got my firewall installed and my harness is on. Now this firewall was slightly modified. I wanted to sit, put the seat back a little bit more. So this was bent more. Uh, it was it was all kind of bent more to, to, to squish down. Like this is in the same location, but everything is squat down more. So there's some gap here. I shine the light in behind. You should be able to see I got all this opening, um, and the gas tank is right behind here and the sanding unit is prone to leaking. Now, I don't know if mine's gonna leak, um, but if it is gonna leak, I'm gonna be getting all kinds of fumes in here. And also, if there wasn't an issue with the fire and the fuel tank, um, I, don't, I don't necessarily like having a big opening there. Now, 
I could make a panel and fit there, but instead what I'm going to do is I, I use this stuff fairly often. Uh, it's aluminum foil tape. Uh, I use it when I'm like uh, TIG welding pipe and you need to use uh, purging gas. So I took some of this and just spray painted it black and then I'll seal up the firewall with that. I also sealed up in here uh, in the opening. And then this was, was added after it was originally it was going to be how I supported my handbrake, but it turned out to flex more than I liked. Um, but the seats kind of go right over it and it just kind of covers this whole area. So I just left it as it is. And uh, you can see on this side, and the tape is done. Just a little extra effort. And just like that, the interior is mostly done. Excuse the creepy mustache uh, between the last clip and this one. I had to go to work and I had to be clean shaven, but uh, a couple times a year I like to leave the stash just because it bugs my wife. So, yeah, there you go, creepy stash. So, I got the door panels installed, obviously I got the harnesses in, the seats are in. I don't have the carpet down yet, that'll be a last touch, it's just going to get dirty, the seats are already getting filthy. Um, door handles. So, I didn't like the... Subaru pull handle, uh, door handles, um, I don't know, it just, it just didn't work for me. It looked like it didn't belong, it looked like it was something from a different car that was slapped on there, you know, like, and you see an old hot rod and it's got like a Chevy Cavalier, um, you know, automatic transmission console right there, and ugh, it just bugs me. And that's kind of the same feel I got from that, I didn't like it. So, uh, although this is from Factory 5 and I like that. It's great. Um, so I did this. It's just a belt I got off of Amazon. Uh, put a couple of tarp straps or tarp um, eyelets through it, and then grab some like one eighth cable or one sixteenth cable. Put a little pulley just inside. I wish I'd taken the picture before I put the panels on, but I'm not taking them off just for the picture. So it's basically just a pull, and there you go. Um, I believe the Porsche GT3 or GT3 RS has these. Uh, I'm not even 100% sure that they're door latches on the Porsche. They might just be like a door pull like this. But uh, it's super easy to use. Um, I think it kind of looks race car. So, yeah, go for it. Before I put this thing on the road, most of the suspension was put together like four years ago, three and a half, four years ago. So I need to go over everything, make sure everything's tight. Uh, I started on the other side, and sure enough, I found a few bolts that were loose. Nothing that was going to affect the alignment, so that's good, because I did the alignment. However, when I did my ride height and then the alignment, there was no body on the car, there was no fluids in the car, there was no turbo in the back, no exhaust, no interior, so the car has gotten quite a bit heavier. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the coilovers while I'm at it. Now, you can see, I got the whole sleeve, and spring off of this coilover. Um, not necessary to change the ride height, but it is necessary when you install, install the collars wrong. So on the collars, this little non-threaded part goes on the bottom, but this little adjuster sleeve is upside down. I had the spring sitting on it like this. So when the spring was loose, it did a whole lot of that, which it's not supposed to do. Whereas if it's sitting on it the right way, it doesn't move. It actually sits in that recessed area nicely. Well, it doesn't seem to want to right now. There it is. All right. So then it doesn't it doesn't wiggle around. So unfortunately, that meant I had to take and I did it on all four corners because of course I was doing them all the same on the bench originally. So that means I've got to take each one apart and spin this off, flip it around, spin it back on, and reassemble the whole coilover. Um, annoying, but again, I might have missed it if I hadn't gone into adjust ride height. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and set it to um, 
half inch more or half inch higher on this. Now what that's going to equate to on the frame, I'm not sure because we got a little bit of angle there and I'm not sure how the math works out there, but a half inch here isn't exactly going to equal a half inch on the frame, but it's just a best guess. I know I'm definitely low as you can see in the first drive video and I put more weight on since then. On the car, not me, I've lost weight since then. Um, so we're just gonna jack it up a little bit and then hopefully it's close. The ride height or the, the alignment was set at ride height. So as long as I get, uh, I got it written down here somewhere, it's like four and a half inches uh, or yeah, maybe maybe five and a half because I've got taller tires. I got it written down, I'll, I'll correct myself at the end of the video. But if I adjust the springs and bring the frame back up to the same height, my alignment should be the same as it was without the extra weight. Um, I think that makes sense. So uh, I want to get it back to that right height and then I know that my alignment is good because that was already set like a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, so hopefully I don't find any crazy things wrong in the back that uh, will have affected the alignment, like a loose bolt where it shouldn't have been but I don't think I will. Holy crap, this thing is low. Like this is, this is insane. Every time I've lowered this car down to the ground, because every time it goes up, it usually stays like a foot and a half up for months on end or a year. Every time I've lowered this car down, I'm just amazed at how low it is. And anyone else with an 818 is gonna tell you the same thing, because you build it up high so you don't break your back and so you get underneath it, but this is low, like crazy low. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's ready for inspection. Now, I haven't driven it with the new transmission yet. Uh, I guess it's not quite ready. I do need to adjust the, the shifter. The shifter was set up decent for as good as the, the factory five supply shifter is. It was set up decent for the previous transmission, but, um, when I just installed it as is in this one, um, you can't really find all the gears. So I just need to reset, go back to zero and, and adjust that, but that shouldn't take long. Uh, basically I'm going to go away to work for a little bit. By the time you guys see this, I'm probably going to be just coming back. Uh, the idea being that this thing is ready for when I get back to throw some fuel in it, a little premix. Um, and drive it around the block and as long as it still drives okay and it did previously and it's got the wide band it's got a, a a decent bass tune um if it drives around my little subdivision okay then i'm gonna get a in transit pass um, from the registries and take it to get my inspection and then i can get a plate on it and drive it around a little bit before it's too cold or the roads are covered in snow and salt and sand and all those lovely things. Uh, but I'd really like to put a few miles on it um, before that happens. So fingers crossed that everything I've done since the last time I drove it, um, which as far as the engine is concerned, I've only added a few sensors. I never had a fuel pressure sensor before. I just gave it a static fuel pressure. So, um, and when I, I didn't actually tell the Infinity which sensor I installed uh, for the fuel pressure, I just I used an AEM sensor, and as soon as I fired up the Infinity, it was already reading the 100 PSI um, pressure sensor. So um, more accurate fuel pressure, so that can't be a bad thing. And uh, oil pressure. Um, it, I now have the, before I just had to gauge the test, but now I actually have 150 PSI, again, AEM, um, oil pressure sensor, uh, that also registered right away. So, um, 
I haven't changed anything else mechanically with the engine. It's quite possible the um, apex seals have, have re-stuck. Um, so after a little drive, I'll do another compression test and, and, and see what's needed. Um, but maybe another dose of the Miracle, Marvel Miracle Oil or maybe some sea foam. Um, I don't know, maybe the compression will be just fine after a little warming up, a few heat cycles. The only issue I did have before is for some reason my fans weren't cutting in. They would turn on when I told them to on, turn on, but they wouldn't turn on at the temperature um, that I was requesting, and I'm not sure why. But that's something minor. Um, and I haven't set any of the warning stuff on the AEM dash yet. Uh, that's all just default stuff. So as far as, um, and I haven't set any fail safes in the AEM. The plan is, if it drives around the block okay, I'm probably just going to set a rev limiter at like three or 4,000 RPM because um, there's a good chance that the guy who does the inspection is going to insist on driving it around the block uh, and I don't want him wrecking it. So I'm going to try to avoid that if I can talk the guy out of it, but um, generally they required to drive it for the inspection. So that is what it is. So I'm just going to limit it so it's three or 4,000 PSI so the guy doesn't get in full boost. Although with this turbo, 4,000 PSI probably would be full boost. And I don't know what full boost is. Um, I set up the wastegate um, a long time ago based on I'm not even sure what information. I'm sure I looked it up um, for the, the install manual for the, uh, for the turbo. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I definitely need to set some fail safes, uh, so we're not going to overboost because we don't we don't have enough fuel in it um, for too much boost. It's still the stock fuel injectors. I do have upgraded stuff, um, but the pump is also it's only a Volvo 255, so the, the, there's basically the whole fuel system fuel system is going to need an overhaul um, this winter, and that was always the plan. I just I really want to drive it enough to know whether or not I need to rebuild the motor for the spring, in which case I better get on it because you guys know I'm a little, I take my time on some of these things. So I want to drive a little bit, uh, get some heat cycles. Maybe those apex seals are free up. The compression will be decent enough and I'll say, Hey, fuck it. Let's just, you know, track it as it is. Um, and I'll upgrade the fuel system. I'm going to just add a fuel sump, um, and my larger injectors. Uh, I guess some 2000, uh, ID 2000 um, injectors to go for secondaries. Um, and I do have some upgraded primaries, but I might just change to some IDs for those as well and just get some nice fuel function, fuel rails. Kind of depends on whether or not I'm rebuilding the motor this winter or not, because if I'm not, then I'll probably spend a little extra and go all out for the fuel system. Um, but I, I want to track this like first autocross track day, lapping day, uh, at Castrol in the spring. So I need to know whether or not this motor needs to come out, <laughs> which would suck, but uh, it's a JDM motor with unknown history. So that was always a possibility. So I want to drive a little bit first because if I can get next season or most of next season on this motor uh, and learn a lot more about the other things I need to change on it, then, you know, that'd be great. <laughs> So that's it for now. Um, hopefully by the time you guys are seeing this, I'll be on the verge or about to go for a little spin on this. If you follow me on Instagram, um, it's currently BRAP818. Uh, it's probably gonna change the post projects just so everything's the same, but right now it's BRAP818. Uh, sometimes you'll see a little more current updates on that because um, there's no editing involved like with videos uh, and I generally only edit videos when I go away to work just sit in a hotel room at night it's a perfect time to do it why be in the house editing videos when I could be out here working on cars um, but that's it uh, I'll stay tuned for updates and hopefully in the next th three four weeks um, from now I'll be driving it um, on the road and uh, Hopefully, uh, but it, there'll be some great video and it won't be an epic fail and it'll all work out. I don't know. Uh, anyway, wish me luck and uh, thanks.
Thanks for the support. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, always welcome feedback. Um, good, bad, whatever. Uh, until next time, peace. Thank <laughs> you.